Here we are for another next generation VHS review. I dropped a popsicle stick on the floor, I'll pick it up later. Okay, so we have Elementary Dear Data and The Outrageous Okuna. Okuna. Okay, kind of sounds like the guy for that, um, that's involved with Star Trek, but whatever. Elementary Dear Data was about knowing that Data is a Sherlock Holmes Fictionado will forge summons data to the holodeck where they travel to London to solve one of the most famed detective mysteries. But the trip is a brief brief one. Having memorized all the Sherlock Holmes books, data can solve the crime with very little effort. So LaForge orders the computer to present data with an original mystery in an opponent who could defeat him. Dr. Pulaski joins Data and LaForge as they return to the holodeck, but the game turns fresh, turns serious when Kate is kidnapped by Professor Mariotti. It, it seems the computer didn't create an adversary worthy of Holmes' intelligence, but of Data's, which means Mariotti is very bright indeed. Now, I actually like this episode because they took... Um, um, Dr. Pulaski Radim. She is the worst character to ever enter Star Trek Star Trek The Next Generation ever. And she was barely in this episode. I don't know. They took the time to dress her up in all that costume for a very short and brief appearance in the TV episode. It makes me wonder why people even bother going on some of these shows if they don't appear that much in them. It's like how much do they pay them to do it is beyond me. This woman couldn't have been paid much to do this TV show. She wasn't on it very long. And she's not even in every episode. Alright, The Outrageous Akuna is the next one. This was a pretty good episode, but it, once again, none of these episodes are action-based. That's, you know, I've just started basically the second season in the VHS tapes. And, you know, this is why everyone hated these shows. Because at the very beginning, the first couple of seasons were crap. And since the original series was only three seasons long, there wasn't much room to get um, to have a lot of crazy action and stuff in it. That's why the movies were good, mostly after the first movie, like The Wrath of Khan and The Search for Spock, The Voyage Home, and all. And what was after that? Um, the Final Frontier was it? Or, um, then the um, Undiscovered Country, or did I miss one in between? Whatever. All right. When Enterprise aids a disabled cargo ship, the crew discovers its sole occupant, Captain Okuna, is fleeing from two small implanetary vessels. The pursuing ships lock their lasers, lasers, which in Star Trek, lasers are weak. <laughs> um, alright, let me get to where we left off on. La lasers on the Enterprise, and the leaders of both ships demand Akuna's surrender. First, Devin accuses Akuna of getting his daughter pregnant. Then Kushal charges Kuna with stealing the national prize jewel of Thesia. <laughs> kind of stupid. Knowing that releasing Akuna to either of them would cause a war between their homelands, Picard thinks the best solution to help Akuna is to make a fast getaway. But after a talk with Wesley, Akuna changes his mind and decides to face his accusers. This is where I kind of made it look like Captain Picard was kind of weak. He just kind of gave up. And he just said, leave, I don't want to deal with it. Use hide behind federal, um, not federal, um, federation regulation. Um, and you know what? I, I really, from watching this show and from watching it before, the first time I ever watched it all the way through, and not just like episodes here and there when I was a kid, never really watched more than like 10 or 15, um, Wesley Crusher was a character nobody liked, and they got rid of him fast. I can't blame him, to tell you the truth. The character is a horribly made character. All right, so that's it. Until next time, um, there was no, there was maybe a line that went through the screen for maybe a second. Other than that, perfection. These tapes are old. They date back to 1988. No, no my mistake. My 1992. But the tape, um... The whole thing was filmed in 88. So these, they're all about like 32 years old, these tapes. And they play fine in my VCR. They are worn out. The colors are kind of worn out too. But it doesn't really go all over the place. Skip and the tracking is out of control. VHS is not as bad as it, as, um, as you think. 
Uh, I bought all of these tapes from eBay from a seller. I think they won it in an auction or something. I don't remember exactly. And they were missing one tape. I had to buy this this other tape separately. And boy, do I got to tell you that. um, <laughs> You know, after dealing with all this, it just, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's crazy how I haven't had one bad Star Trek VHS tape yet. Odds are it'll happen. I just don't. I'd rather it happen with the next generation tapes because I can easily replace these. It's the Voyager tapes. The Voyager tapes are the ones that if one of those goes bad, like say one of the latest season seven tapes, like um, what was that um, Unimatrix Zero or something? That's not exactly an easy tape to get by itself. And there are some tapes you can't buy by itself. Period. Or, or, or stuff like um, what's it the um. Who was the Captain Ransom? What was that? Wait, Voyager. What was the name of that episode? Um. Oh, damn it. I. For, um, I forgot the name. Of it. I'd sleep, but whatever. You know what I mean. Later on episodes, in VHS and all that. So um. You know, no imperfections. That's pretty much what I'm trying to prove. You know, VHS can be wonderful if you take care of it. Alright, that's it. Bye-bye.